his mercy endures forever. We are here for worship this morning. Yeah. Yeah. Let's all give God a hand clap of praise.
we have our social media platforms, we say welcome to you as well. Amen. On behalf of our interim pastor, Dr. Mark Oliver, and our associate pastor, Reverend Brenda Anderson, we say welcome to the church with the genuine fellowship. Amen. In spite of what you may be going through, we don't know your vows, but I pray that you all have a great week. Amen. Amen.
everybody. Again, for those listening online and those downstairs and others in the sanctuary, we welcome you to the church with genuine fellowship. Amen. 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 Good to see everybody this fine day. And uh, I understand you had a nice time following Jesus last Sunday. Isn't that right? Brother Brady brought a word last Sunday. I listened to it myself and I'm so proud. Now, we missed you for a week, uh, but uh, we're a little bit recharged now. And it's good to see you back uh, on this day. Now, also, I just would like to I just actually ask a request of you. Um, you know Brother Alonzo Fields, who, uh, who passed a few weeks ago. Uh, we understand that they're having a difficult time, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, finding his daughters. And... Uh, and if they don't, um, they would probably have to cremate him without a funeral. If any of you know how to reach his relatives, that would be most gracious because we he's been a help to this church. Not a member, but he's been a help. He's been, and, and we need to do what we can. So I'm asking if somebody knows his relatives, please let them get in contact with um, I guess the proper persons, I guess that'd be the medical examiners, to uh, so that we can at least acknowledge all the service that he has done. Amen? Amen. Amen. So if we could do that, that would be much appreciated. Also, I've got a question for you. Have you ever shared anything? Bless those who are in the nursing homes. Bless those who are in jail. 
and her devil.
the power of sharing when you know the truth about possessions. Look at verse 32 again. It says, The multitude of them that believed were of one heart, one soul. Neither said any of them that all of the things which he possessed was his own. So they knew it. They, they, had, they knew the truth about their possessions. They knew that what we have is not our own. If you don't believe it, give it some time. You'll see. But they had all things common. In other words, they shared what they had. They, they, they were over what they were over, but they, they shared it willingly. And it says, in great power, gave the apostles with, with great power, the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. So the power of sharing comes when you know the truth about your possessions. And in that truth, you understand that everything belongs to God. Yes. If you don't believe it, we're going through quite a few scriptures today. Psalm 24 and 1 says, The earth is the Lord's, yes. and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. So it's the Lord's while we're coveting it. Yes. The earth is the Lord's. And you don't believe it? Close our eyes. Somebody else will have it. So the earth is the Lord. It belongs to God. James 1 and 17 says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Every good and perfect gift comes from Him. We ain't all that. It belongs to God. Every good gift comes from God. Psalm 50 and 10 for every beast of the forest is mine, and the cattle upon a thousand hills. It all belongs to God. We need to understand the truth about possessions. So if we know it belongs to God, then we don't need to covet. First Timothy 6 and 10. For the love of money. I didn't say money. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. How else are we not supposed to covet? 1 John 2 and 15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Now, if we love in our possessions and our houses and our cars and our bank accounts and all of those things, if we have more love for that than the love of God, then the love of God is not in us. Don't cut. Luke 12 and 15. And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. Everything belongs to God. We shouldn't cover it. And we also need to know the truth about possessions in that possessions are temporary. Proverbs 23 and 5. For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away as an eagle toward heaven. You got money today. Don't mean you'll have money tomorrow. Don't mean you'll have money later today. Psalms 49, 16, and 17. Be not thou afraid when one is made rich, when the glory of his house is increased. For when he dieth, he shall carry nothing away. His glory shall not descend after him. The power of sharing comes when you know the truth about possessions. You know that they belong to God. You know that we shouldn't covet. And you know that possessions are temporary. The truth about possessions. What else do you know about the power of sharing? Power of sharing comes when you take care of the poor. The power of sharing comes when you take care of the poor. Look at verse 34. Neither was there any among them that lacked. For as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the prices of the things that were sold. They had blessings because they took care of of the poor. Somebody was lacking next to them, they sold something and they gave it to help them out. The blessing can be uh, powerful in the positive. 
Luke 6, 38. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Press down. Shaken together. Running over. Shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet, with all this shall be measured to you again. And in the same attitude that, that you give out, the same attitude that's going to come back at you. The same joyfulness that you give and the same uh, uh, openness that you give is the same openness that will come back to you. Press down, shaking together, running over. Goodness gracious. I'm, I'm, how do you say I'm drinking from my saucer because of my cup. Come on, y'all. Don't know this. I want some saucer blessings. I don't know about y'all. Acts 20 and 35. I've shown you all things, how that so laboring you ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said it is more blessed to give than to receive. There's blessings, there's power in giving when you take care of the poor. Proverbs 19 and 17. He that hath pity upon the poor lendeth unto the Lord. And that which he hath given will he pay him again. God doesn't mess up on his debts. If God said he's going to pay you back, God's going to pay you back. Listen to that again. He that hath pity on the poor lends to the Lord. You're lending to the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. You're lending to the Lord. You're not just doing it for you. You're doing it to the Lord. And that which he has been given, will he repay again? He'll give it back to you. 10, 20, 30, 40, 100 fold right back to you. With interest. It's the power of sharing. It's when you take care of the poor, when you, when you realize that the blessing comes from uh, the power is in the positive. But it can also be a curse. A power in the negative if you don't do it right. Proverbs 28 and 27. He that giveth unto the, unto the poor shall not lack, but he that hideth his eyes shall have many a curse. If you pretend like you don't see somebody in need, you know, step over them on your way into the church. Pretend like you look the other way when you pull up to a stop sign and somebody's you don't want to catch your eye contact. Oh my, y'all getting quiet when you're here. I know I ain't the only one. He that giveth unto the poor shall not lack, and he that hideth his eyes shall have many a curse. First John 3 17. But whoso hath this world's good, and seeth his brother have need. And shutteth, shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him. How dwelleth the love of God in him? How can we come to church and say we are filled with the Holy Ghost, fire baptized, can sing till the cows come home, but then turn our backs when somebody's in need? That is not what God desires for his people. Somebody said amen. amen. So the power of sharing comes when you know the truth about possession. The power of sharing comes when you take care of the poor. But the power of sharing also happens when you can trust the pastor. And laid them down at the apostles' feet. And distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. Let me give you a little bit of a background. The church was not only the spiritual center with the word of God. It was also a social security network. The church was to take care of the widows, the orphans, the fatherless, the ministers, and the poor. That's what the church was outlined and what the church did. It was a hospital, not only a spiritual hospital, but it was a physical hospital. 
Because when people were sick, they said, call on the elders of the church, anoint them with oil, and the prayer of faith would save the sick. And if they committed any sins, it would be forgiven them. So the church did all of these things. In the Old Testament, the third chapter of Malachi says, bring the tithes to the storehouse. So there would be no lack. The, the church was the distribution center for all of those things. So when they say they came in verse 35, they laid it at the apostles' feet. This was an uh, expression that the giver of the gift allowed the receiver to do with it as seemed best. So in other words, if you're going to give to the church, lay it at the apostles' feet. If you're going to do these things, you have to trust that it's going to be used for the purpose that you brought it to. The power of sharing comes when you can trust the pastor, when you can trust the church, when you bring things to the storehouse. Those apostles that are mentioned here were initially the pastors and the trustees until things changed later on when you had deacons and you had other things, uh, other uh, offices come along. But initially, that's what they were doing. They were making sure that things were taken care of. They were the dispensers of the church's funds as well as the church's doctrines. So the power of sharing comes when you can trust the pastor. By laying them at the apostles' feet or the pastor's feet in that time, they were acknowledging their belief in God and even more in their belief in God with and through the apostles and their management, leadership, decision-making, integrity, and lifestyles. That is, they committed the money received for their property to, for the disposal of the apostles to distribute it as was necessary to the poor. Now if you sell a house, land, and give the funds to the church, you want to trust that it will be dealt with properly. Amen. Is that a fair assumption? If you give, you want to make sure that you're giving on good to good soil. You're planting your seed in good ground so it can bring forth, right? You want to make sure that you can trust what's going on. That's the type of leaders. I know the church is looking for leaders, looking for a pastor, the next pastor. You want to make sure you can find somebody who you can trust. It's getting quiet up in here. <laughs> Make sure you're looking for somebody that you can trust. Somebody who has some integrity. Yes. Some honesty. Yes. Who adheres to a pattern of good work works that have moral incorruptibility. They can't be bribed and they can't be compromised. Yes. Who will make sure funds are used properly. Because they serve God and not man. You want a person of integrity according to Jeremiah 3 and 15. And I will give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. You want a pastor according to Micah 6 and 8, who will do justly and love mercy and walk humbly with that God. Then you'll have no issue complying with the words of Hebrews 13 and 17. Obey them to have the rule over you and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls, yes. as they must give account right. that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that is unprofitable for you. Yes. Yeah. All right. yes. I will give you an analogy and and I don't know how much truth it is to it, but just think of this. They say a fish, a dead fish stinks. Dark from the head. <laughs> Make sure as you're looking, as a 
search committee looks. Make sure that you can get somebody with integrity. Yes. Zion has been around for 135 years. I believe she's going to be around for longer. And the way you do that is from some serious prayer. Some serious prayer. Not just enjoying a hoop and a holler, but some teaching. Something that will be planted in soil, good soil. And it will bring forth good fruit. Because if you don't, it says it's going to be unprofitable for you. You might enjoy the sizzle. But when the sizzle and the smoke clears, <laughs> what do you have? None but grease. We want this church to be blessed and this church to move forward. A prime example of this, as you look in verse 36, the man named Barnabas, the son of encouragement. He had land he sold and he brought the money and laid it to the feet. What a beautiful example that is. The son of encouragement. A good model to follow that you can trust in those in leadership and authority over you. The power of sharing comes when you know the truth about possession. The power of sharing comes when you take care of the poor. The power of sharing comes when you can trust the pastor. The power of sharing. God bless you. Won't you come? Oh, Tyrone. 
Carolyn, you're closer. Carolyn wants prayer. Is there someone else that wants prayer? Won't you come? Raise your hand. Prayer is always important. The Lord says, when two or three are gathered here, in the midst, he's in the midst. So he'll be in the midst of our prayer. Won't you come?
And he is worthy to be praised. And it just shows that he's been with us in the past. He's with us right now. And I can look to the future and see that he's still with us. And I know that we're going to get to that point that we can look back and someone is coming up behind us. That's what we've been praying for. And we know God does hear and answer prayer. Amen. And so we, we just give God all the glory and honor and praise as we see him lifting us. Amen. Amen. So let us all stand. We're going to get ready to go home. I pray that everyone will have a good week. Amen. And tell somebody. Amen. Share something with them this week. Amen. Amen. We're going to have our closest selection. Everybody say amen.